Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell. So I want to tell you about my day, just because. It's a nice little story, I think. So it actually began about 5.30 this morning when I woke up and my stomach was killing me. And I didn't really know what to do. Uh, it was a travel day. I was coming back down south. <laughs> so even though my stomach was killing me, I said, you know, let's see if I can get a little bit more sleep. I didn't have to wake up till 9 o'clock uh, to get myself ready to get to the airport. So I said, you know, let me see if I can get a little bit more sleep. Well, I made it to 7.30 before I woke up again and I was in dire pain. And it was some kind of gas. And it was just in my stomach. And, you know, you really only have a couple of options at that point. The first one is actually the first one to see if you can get out of bed, which I did. And the second was to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and I basically stayed in there pretty much 35, 40 minutes trying to get things moving. I even got myself some Alka-Seltzer and, and by the time stuff started moving, oh, the pain, it was just, it was just dire pain. And yeah, this is a wonderful way to start a video, but you know, it, it's part of the story. And so my wife was there and she said, you know, geez, what's wrong? What do you think happened? And I thought about it, and I said, you know what I bet it was? I bet it was the cabbage that we had last night with dinner. I made salmon. My wife made fried cabbage because I asked for it. Love her fried cabbage. What I forgot is that it creates a lot of gas. And I should have taken something for it last night, but I didn't. And I haven't had that kind of food in a real long time. You know, both my wife and I work out of town. So it had been a long time since she had cooked that and my stomach wasn't ready for it. So that beat me up. And then it continued to hurt until pretty much close to 9 o'clock, is, which is when I was supposed to be waking up. So now I'm worried a little bit because I'm thinking, goodness, I certainly don't want stomach problems on an airplane. And, you know, we started doing everything. I started making sure I had everything packed that I needed to have packed. And we left. Had to stop at the bank so I could deposit a check. And then I got to the airport kind of early, and I started feeling pretty good. And I'm thinking, okay, you know what? This is going to be a fine day. And I get on my first plane, leaving Syracuse, heading to Philly. And I get to Philly. I didn't eat anything in the morning, but now I'm in Philly, and it's time for a Philly cheesesteak. They've got a place that they call Local Restaurant. That's actually the name of it, Local Restaurant. <laughs> it's, in, it's in the airport. So I get off my plane, and I look at the board, and I see, okay, I'm supposed to be at this certain gate. Perfect. I go over, get something to eat. Now, they have these touch pads, which are pretty cool uh, in this restaurant. There's all these different iPads, and you know they're locked there so no one can steal them. And I ordered my meal, and then I checked my flight. There it was on there, and it said what gate it was. Everything is wonderful. I finish my meal. I look at my time. Say, oh, I've got time for a foot massage. So I go over to this place called, let's see, I think it's called Express Bar, uh, Spa. I go there. I get a foot massage. It's absolutely wonderful. You sit in this chair and the chair vibrates and runs up and down your back and it's nice and light touch. And this lady's just doing these things with the feet and rubbing it and putting a hot, well, warm towels on it. Not hot, thank goodness. This is not a pedicure. There's no cutting going on. They're not moving fast. It's just a nice slow massage. Oh my God. So everything's feeling fine. I'm looking at my time. I'm thinking my time is, is good. I get out. I pay my money, I go to my gate. That's when now I start noticing, oh, something's wrong. One, they're going to a different city than what I'm going to. Like, what the devil? So I go over, have to find a departures thing. I find it, find out they moved my gate all the way at the other end, total all the way at the end. So I start walking really fast and I get there and the plane is left. So I missed my flight. Now, a lot of people would have freaked and done all this other kind of stuff, but I didn't freak. I went to the lady and said, oh, geez, it looks like I missed a flight. And she said, you're Mr. Mitchell, aren't you? <laughs> you fly enough places, they start to know who you are. I said, yeah, uh, that's me. So she looks and she starts booking things and says, well, you have a chance to make this next flight. Unfortunately, the next flight is also going to be a connecting flight. We're going to have to take you to Charlotte before you can get to your final destination. And I've got to give you this, and you've got to kind of rush over because they're going to start boarding in about five minutes or so, and you have to get on the shuttle bus. Thinking, oh, well, isn't this just wonderful timing? So I walk 
over to where the shuttle bus is. And I, it's not all that far. I get there pretty quickly. And the bus is out there. So I got lucky. The bus, you know, I was just waiting and people were getting on the bus. So I got on the bus to go from E terminal to A terminal. So I get in there and I notice, okay, I'm not all that far away from the gate I need to get to. So I walk to the gate as fast as I can. And they have started boarding, uh, but they're taking, you know, the first class people and such. And usually I get to fly first class, but because this was, you know, me getting over there really quick, I had to get there and I was actually on standby. But one of the lucky things is being a, a preferred member of this particular airline, I moved to the front of the line. That was nice. So I moved to the front of the line. So I just sat there, waited my thing. And then, you know, even before they were done boarding everyone, this lady calls my name. Oh, that's me. She hands me a ticket. I'm in row 31. I didn't even know planes had rows 31 because <laughs> when I leave out of Syracuse, you don't really have a lot of really, really large planes. So this isn't anything I'm really used to. And I was way back. I was like two rows from the very back. And this was like a triple on each side so there was a ton of people on this plane and I had this guy basically sleeping on me for pretty much almost the entire flight from Philly down to Charlotte obviously he was really exhausted luckily I had my my nook and all of the weird thing you know one of the weird things about it is I didn't want to wake him so when the lady came asked me what I was doing you know Coke Zero she reached over and I reached over my left hand because I was up against the window I didn't want to wake the guy I don't know why I didn't want to wake the guy it just he just seemed so peaceful sleeping there so anyway, eventually get to Charlotte. Now I've got more time to kind of wait. And my next ticket was supposed to be row 16, but I like being, you know, a little further up. So I go and I ask, you know, is it possible I can get a little closer? Preferred member, I get to row 9. Eh, I take row 9. So I'm once again, once again against the window. So I get on early because I'm a preferred member. I get in, get my thing up there, doing good, lock myself in. And then this lady comes, large lady. And, you know, it's like, okay, it's going to be a little tight. She's got my spot. And so I said, hello. She totally ignored me, put the thing down, locked her thing, didn't say a word. Could have let that get me mad. Because I think, I'm thinking, well, how rude is that? You always say hi to people. Well, you know what? Fine. Now, during the flight, I don't know if she had a problem with me or if she had a problem being in the seat because, you know, the seats aren't necessarily meant for bigger people. They just aren't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, luckily, I've lost some weight and some inches, so I fit pretty nicely now. Thank God. Anyway, she did this thing where she kind of turned her back kind of to me and she was <laughs> leaning into the aisle doing something. I don't know what it is. I've never seen anyone do that on an airplane. But you know what? I figure I don't care. I've got my Nook. I'm listening to my movies, actually watching something on the Nook. So I'm a happy guy. Let her do what she wants to do. So I end up getting where I needed to get, where I am right now. I'm 90 minutes late. You know what? That's not necessarily so bad. 90 minutes, not a bad thing at all. However, I then go to get my rental car, and they have run out of cars. They have vehicles. Now I'm driving something, you know what, I can't even tell you what it's called. Oh, it's called a Sierra. I didn't even know what a Sierra was. I'd never heard of it. I think it's a Kia. I really don't know. But it's one of those long, long things with three rows in it. You know, this is like for families that have like 10 or 12 people in them. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. I might not be. But, <laughs> you know, you have a lot of places for people to sit. And this is me. Just one person who's going to drive this monster thing. I'm not used to anything like that. But still, it was red. Red's my favorite color. So what am I going to be mad about? So I get that. I go to program the phone. Phone works fine. Then I go to program the, the uh, Bluetooth audio. It's just not having it. Not having it. But I said, you know what? That's okay. I can just listen to my recorded book fine. So I do that. I go to the office, I get what I need to get, you know, I, when I leave, I usually take some things to where I work and store them there instead of storage at the hotel, um, so that, you know, the night before, I don't have to go over anywhere else, I just do that. So I go get the stuff, come back to the hotel, and then initially they thought they had given away my room. I'm like, what the devil? What do you mean you gave away my room? Well, after about five minutes, they find out, oh no, we had a glitch in the system, you got your room. So, 
got my room, went out, had dinner, came back. Everything's fine. You know, I tell this story, one, because I just have these weird things that happen during the day. But I tell these stories because I'm trying to show how, for the most part, I'm a pretty even-keeled kind of guy. Even when things get thrown in your face that are, you know, somewhat disruptive. I mean, missing a plane, I mean, there are people who just freak. And they start yelling at all these other people when it's their fault. Um, and then having this lady being kind of rude to me on an airplane, you know, there's some people who might have said something to her. I just decided, you know what, she's got her own issue. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be calm and collected. And, you know, I, I don't, didn't need her. If she had said something later on, I might have done something, but I didn't have to go there. And, you know, this is one of those kind of things that I say for the most part. Um, we do teach people how to treat us, but we also can't always be reactionary to things that happen in our lives that don't quite go our way. I tend to try to view everything as a story and then I can tell the stories or I can relive it or I can write about it. Uh, I certainly enjoyed telling my wife the story. I didn't tell her the part about, you know, eh, I skipped a part, couple of parts <laughs> when I told my wife and she never watches any of my videos so I'm good. But, um, you know, we have to get to this point. There's a lot of tension in this world. There's a lot of people who get inflamed about a lot of things that have nothing to do with them and if you're getting mad at stuff that has nothing to do with you then when stuff does have something to do with you you're gonna get even madder and there's a lot of fights and a lot of people get hurt and a lot of people get killed and it's just gotta stop somewhere people you know we need to be more responsible for our own selves we need to chill just chill a little bit uh, you know I understand this thing that's going on in Ferguson, Missouri. I, you know, I see it from both sides. I understand why some people are mad. I don't understand why they're still rioting. I just don't get it. I mean, the police have been replaced by the state police. Now there's uh, the National Guard is there, and people are still rioting. Uh, people were mad at a curfew. I'm sorry, it was a five-hour curfew from midnight to 5 a.m. Go home and get a nap. Go to sleep. Nothing good ever really happens after midnight. I know some people will say, well, you know, you go to the club, you hook up. No, 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 no. Trust me. <laughs> Nothing good really ever happens after midnight. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I understand part of that where you're mad because of the initial thing that happened, but that's over now. Go home. Relax. Chill. Now people are looking into it. Justice is going to be served. At least I hope so. Uh, you know, I like to think that the best things are going to happen in life. And that's how I kind of live my life. And if it doesn't happen that way, well, then we have another Trayvon. And I don't know what to say about that. I don't even want to go there. I don't want to get mad. Uh, I just want to stay in a peaceful state. Let me know what you think, though. You know, are there those times where you overreact to bad things that happen in your life, even if they, you know, they're easily fixed? Or even if, you know, I mean, my thinking is I had that airport story uh, from a few months ago where I had to spend a night in the airport. I wasn't the only one. It wasn't anyone's fault. You just roll with it and you move with it. You know, things can always be resolved. Let me know if you think I'm just being Pollyanna or if you think, you know, maybe I've got something there. Maybe this is something you do or maybe this is something you should do. Y'all let me know. And this is Mitch Mitchell. I hope you have a wonderful night because I'm going to bed. <laughs>